I, for one, have a problem with how they do lactose intolerance testing at the doctor's office. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you an easy DIY way to figure it out yourself. Now, let's start off by talking about your goal, your real actual goal. You're not in this to get a pure black and white answer. You're in this to understand how much can I get away with, <laughs> right? Because you're only human. Even if you get a positive lactose intolerance test and the doctors tell you to not eat lactose, I can almost guarantee you most people watching this video will not completely abstain from dairy. It's freaking delicious and it's everywhere, people. So what you want to know is how much wiggle room do you have? Like, what can you get away with? Can you eat that piece of cake with real buttercream frosting at the wedding? Or do you really have to scrape it off or abstain altogether? And that's what this video is hopefully going to teach you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the phases of the experiment here. And then I've got my glass of milk depicted on this side. So first and foremost, what I would recommend if you have any inkling that dairy doesn't sit well with you and you're trying this experiment, the first step is to cut out all dairy. Yes, I don't care if it's lactose free. I don't care if it's, you know, just has a teeny bit of casein protein in it, whatever. For two weeks, if not a little bit longer, go ahead and just cut out all of the dairy. You will survive, I assure you. And this is giving us a clean slate. It's giving us a baseline for the next part of the experiment. So after you get that clean slate and you give yourself a little bit of a break from all dairy, you move into phase two, which is where you go to the store and you buy some lactose removed milk. So in the United States, we have lactate. I don't know if there are other brands in other countries, but you get the idea. This is milk, but it has had the lactose removed from it. And you're going to start introducing this and it's going to go bit by bit. So maybe you start with just two ounces the first day and you see how you feel. And then you could do four ounces and maybe eight ounces and you could play with it a little bit. If you get to this stage and you find that the lactose removed dairy is a problem for you, it's clearly not the lactose. There's some other component of dairy that's flaring you up. Most likely it's casein, which is one of the proteins. But if you get to this stage and you realize, ooh, dairy is really, really bugging me. I can't even tolerate lactose removed milk. You're not a lactose intolerant person and you're not a, oh, I can have a little bit person. For the time being, at this point in your life, you are a don't eat it at all person. So... We're going to say, uh, eat zero. Do not eat dairy for the time being. Now I will say I was in this camp for a really long time and it took me years to muster up the guts to try dairy because I thought this was a forever thing. I'm not convinced of that anymore. I actually have a video on this channel talking about whether or not food sensitivities are a forever thing. And now I'm of the opinion that the answer is no, but what I will say is you might have to hunker down here and give your body a break from this for a period of months or possibly years. It depends how many ducks you have in a row and what you're doing in your healing journey, right? So if you have a problem at this stage with lactose removed milk, the answer is just no dairy for you. Sorry. But if you do okay with the lactose removed milk, you are free to progress to step three, which is to now go to the store and you're going to still buy some lactose removed milk, but now you're going to buy some regular lactose containing regular old milk. And actually, hold on, I'm going to do a different color for this one. You'll see why in a second. So lactose containing actual milk. And this is where the diagram of the cup comes into play. Now, in the second part of this experiment, you got up to a full glass of lactate milk and you felt totally fine. So you already are capable of having a full eight ounce glass of milk. It's just a matter now of debating how much lactose you can tolerate. So you're gonna start the next phase of the experiment having eight ounces of milk every day, but you're gonna mix and match a little bit. So on the first day, you know, back in phase two, you were doing eight ounces of lactate milk and zero ounces of lactose milk. That's phase two. When you start phase three, you're going to gradually introduce the lactose milk. 
So the first step of that might just be to try one ounce of lactose-containing milk, and all of the rest of it, the remaining seven ounces, is lactate or lactose removed. And here, hold on. There, we've got lactose removed, and we've got lactose containing. If that goes well, congratulations, now you get to progress. And the pace that you go at is completely up to you. What I would say is like dip your toe in the water with the first ounce or two, and then if that goes well, then you could progress up to like, you know, three ounces and maybe four and four, and then you get up to six, and then you can shoot all the way up to eight. Obviously, if you get all the way up to eight ounces of regular normal people milk, congratulations, you are not lactose intolerant. You could probably plant your face in a milkshake and it won't do a damn thing to you. But if you're down here and you introduce just a teeny bit, like one ounce of lactose milk, and you have a flare up or diarrhea or bloating from that, you probably are fairly lactose intolerant. You probably are gonna be, so like here, for example, hold on, I'll draw in red. So let's say that you had a response down here. One ounce of lactose removed milk and all the rest is normal. Sorry, I said that backwards. Let's say that you had one ounce of lactose containing milk and all the rest was lactose removed and you had a reaction from that. I would say that you are fairly severely lactose intolerant in which case you are a person who can maybe get away with a little bit here or there. So you could have butter on a piece of toast. You could probably have some yogurt because that is lower in lactose. You could look at the high and low lactose food list and you could do low lactose dairy, whereas this person could not. And that's kind of where you hunker. And that if you go beyond that threshold, you're probably going to get some negative consequences or you're at least going to need an enzyme supplement. Versus if you get, let's say that you get to 50-50 and you could do four ounces of lactose containing milk and four ounces of lactate, I would say you're more moderately lactose intolerant. So maybe you are the kind of person at this stage where you could do one single serving of dairy each day, or you could do a single serving of cheese or some cake with a little bit of frosting on it. And so you have to be a little bit mindful, but not as mindful and careful as this person or this person. And then, like I said, if you get all the way up to a full eight ounce glass of lactose containing milk, you're good, man. Like you could just drink it straight from the cow probably and be totally fine. But Hopefully this gives you an idea of, again, how to do this cheaply at home, but also get some answers and understand, am I a person who cannot do dairy in any way, shape or form for the time being? Or do I have a little bit of wiggle room? Could I go out to a restaurant or could I have that one item that I really, really miss? And honestly, that's what life is all about. You want to enjoy your food. You want to be able to eat with your friends and family and go to parties and go to weddings. So I think that this is more... Uh, the, the gray areas in between the extremes is where human life actually is, and I hope that this helps you on your journey. Last but not least, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that lactose tolerance appears to be modulated by the microbiome. I've worked with cases, including my own daughter, where I was able to increase lactose tolerance for somebody by modulating their microbiome and getting it strong and happy and healthy and resilient. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna go from bottom of the barrel lick a stick of butter and get diarrhea, lactose intolerance, all the way up to planting your face in a milkshake. But even going from here to here could be a humongous victory and a huge increase in food freedom for somebody who is currently not able to do lactose. And like I said, modulating the microbiota and helping it be happy and strong and resilient and healthy appears to be the ticket to doing that. And what better way to learn that than working with me in FODMAP Freedom? FODMAP Freedom is my group coaching program where I teach you A to Z, everything you need to know and everything you don't need to know to heal your gut once and for all and have a healthy, happy, strong, resilient microbiome that can do all of these cool tasks for you and keep you happy and healthy. I hope that you'll consider checking it out. The link to the waitlist is down below. You can join that and then you'll be the first to know when we're enrolling again. And not only does that secure your seat before we potentially have to close the enrollment, 
but it'll also get you a super cool bonus gift that you don't want to miss out on. I hope I get to see you in FODMAP Freedom really soon. And until then, I'll see you in the next YouTube video. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.